Hi, and uh, welcome to this installment of Bergeron Briefs. If you haven't seen this show before, my name is Art Bergeron. Uh, I'm an elder law attorney. I work at Myrick O'Connell. There are 60 of us at Myrick O'Connell, uh, 20 of them actually here in uh, Westboro. Um, I do nothing but elder law. And I try to do these shows, Bergeron Briefs, in order to supplement the seminars that I do here and in other communities talking about various elder law issues. Because if you are a senior, then to understand the issues that you have to face, there, there are some things about elder law that are law, but a lot of it is really are really about programs and how to qualify for programs and who runs the programs. And, the, and you need to know the people who are involved in that. Uh, one of those people you need to know is Alicia Rigo, who was nice enough. By the way, is it Rigo or Rago? Rago. An Alicia Rago, who is kind <laughs> enough to, to join us today. Thank you so much. Um, and is from Marlboro originally? Originally, right? yes. And it was a maiden name was Seymour. We were just kind of talking about this stuff, right? <laughs> That's right. But you now, you now work at Bay Path Elder Services. Yes. So first, tell us a little bit about you, what you did before you got to Bay Path. And then tell us a little bit about Bay Path Elder Services. Sure. Yeah, I actually worked um, in pre-kindergarten yep. for about 10 years before uh, I started at Bay Path about four years ago after I got my psychology degree. See, for us old people, I look at you and I go, now, you can't be that old. I know. You were 10 years before. But anyway, I'll, I'll give you that. So you worked in pre-kindergarten, right? I did. I did. And um, you got a psych degree. Yes. And, and then you wanted to do some other things. Right. right yeah, I wound up at Bay Path. Um, yeah. Randomly, I guess yeah. you could say, yeah. uh, and it's it's been great. So I've learned a lot over the last four years. There's lots to do at Bay Path. There's lots to lots. Yes. To, tell us a little bit about <laughs> Bay Path. Bay Path Elder Services, which is located in Marlboro. In right in Marlboro, mm -hmm. but it's really a it's a it's a, like a regional agency, right? So that you you cover a lot of towns. We serve 14 towns, including yeah. Westboro. Including Westboro, yeah. um, and basically there's a lot of programs at Bay Path, um, but I think our our biggest and, and kind of those programs are all based around what, what is the mandate of Bay Path? What do you, what do you, what do you, why do you exist? Yeah. You're not a, you're not a for profit. You're not, you're not out there trying to sell things to seniors. No. Right? So this isn't a sales show, nope. right? We're you're state and government we're, I'm actually, we're paying your salary, right? Right. We're, right. we're like, <laughs> you're, we're, our tax dollars are at work. So thank you. We're, right. We're, <laughs> so on behalf of all of us seniors. Right. Right. So yeah, um, our biggest, uh, what we do at Bay Path mm -hmm. is really we want to keep elders in their home for as long as they possibly can. Um, and so we provide services such as in-home services to include um, grocery shopping, laundry, cleaning, help with bathing, dressing. Yeah. Um, and, and by the way, that's, that's, ev that's every one of my clients' goals. Whenever I do presentations, um, I do a PowerPoint, and I always use this make-believe couple, Frank and Mary. And I mm -hmm. always say that their goal in life They've got three kids, Peter, Paul, and Mary Jr., and I always tell them that, you know, people, that if, if you get that joke, that means you're a senior, right? <laughs> and, and their goal, Frank and Mary, their goal is to die and be buried in the backyard. Everybody wants to stay home. They want to be home. So your goal really is, your goal is their Make goal. Make that right? possible. And when you say you provide these services, are you are you providing the services yourself, or do you, are you hiring folks that are doing these various things for seniors? Bay Path contracts um, with m many different agencies that has workers that do these type of uh, tasks. Yeah. So we work with our contracted agencies to, to find the right fit for people. I see. And and, wh and you, what is your job? What do you so do? So at Bay Path, I'm actually now the uh, caregiver specialist. So mm -hmm. a little bit different. I work with caregivers in the community, um, mm -hmm. not just of Bay Path clients. They can yeah. be anybody in our 14 towns that's caring for somebody in our towns. I see. Um, the caregiver actually doesn't have to live in the 14 towns. They can be long distance caregivers as well. Uh, and reach me by, by phone. Um, and these are people who are helping others. And it could be that you're helping your spouse or you're living in the same house. Right. Or you might be helping mom or dad or somebody and therefore you're not living there but you know, you're, you're, you're like coming in. Right, right. right. And, and you're, so you're helping caregivers of seniors who need any specific kind of care or who just need help in general? Caregiving is such a broad, I think, word. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it's, well, the guidelines really are for anyone over 60 mm -hmm. or anyone suffering from Alzheimer's disease, any age. Um, so usually the people that I see have some sort of health condition. Yeah. Um, but there's no necessary, you don't have to have Alzheimer's, you don't have to have um, anything 
really and, and, and just to give me a sense of it because the, the folks that I tend to deal with primarily as a lawyer are folks who have dementia I always mm -hmm. tell people my clients are basically people who are worried about Alzheimer's or they have Alzheimer's or somebody they know has Alzheimer's right. but in terms of the folks you're dealing with the, the, the folks that you're the caregivers you're dealing with are caring for what percentage of them would you say are people who have dementia versus people who have just other issues I would say probably over 50 percent. So, but but over 50 percent. So, in other words, maybe almost 50 percent are 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 not. Yeah, yeah. I issues. see a lot of um, people with Parkinson's or ALS, yeah. Yeah. Um, other health conditions, yeah. strictly just diabetes or some memory loss that might not be Alzheimer's or dementia. I see. I see. So it's really a, so. In other words, people are not waiting to call you until they've got a real serious dementia problem. There could be any number of reasons right, right, right. why I they might be calling. I actually encourage people to call um, early just to get an idea of what's out there mm -hmm. because too often you see people that um, are at their breaking point they're getting you know caregiver burnout or don't know what's available so they yeah. don't have anything or any help now can, give, can you give me some examples of that just just talk sure. about talk about obviously we're not talking names but just talk about some cases because I want people to kind of appreciate mm -hmm. why this should be called yeah, most um, people that I see that get really, I guess you could use the term burnt out, yep. um, it's because they're they are helping a loved one with all of their needs, their grocery shopping, their medication management, their money management, yep. um, cleaning laundry, shopping, even into bathing and dressing. Um, and they might even have a little bit of help, but again, it's sort of, it's okay to know that it's, it's hard to do it all on your own, and it's not easy. Right. Um, it's okay to accept help, and it is out there. So I think a lot of people just don't realize that it's out there. It's in, and a lot of times that help that they're getting is like the lady down the street, mm -hmm. right? Or somebody that they're, some, they're paying a few bucks under the table and people are coming in for a few hours. Right, so I think yeah. a lot of the people you talk to, I should, I should phrase this as a question because I don't know this. Do, do many of the people that you talk to, do they find it surprising that they're actually eligible for some of this stuff? That they can get some of some of this care, you know, and that you folks are going to help pay for it? Yeah, I think that that I do find that quite often. Just that people one don't realize that Bay Path even exists um, or other resources in the community, um, and then when we go into Bay Path and the copay system, which is based on your annual income yeah. of the uh, care recipient, the elder, or the uh, elder, and if it they're a couple yeah. um, and then we go into that and they they say wow I can get all these services for you know a small amount of money or e even if it's a large amount of money you know they can yeah. get them yes for, yes yes yeah yeah and, and for a copay and, and and a lot of those programs aren't necessarily based on you don't have to be poor like you don't have to have right. no assets to qualify for a lot of your programs, right. right we don't look at assets actually mm -hmm. at all we look at um, just your annual income yeah so, so now give me, give me some examples of people that you've, you know, the situation, because you've, you've told me that you've really focus on caregiver support. Yes. And caregiver support, well, maybe you should start by saying, we should start by saying, to kind of define what, what is caregiver support as opposed to support for the person being cared for. Mm -hmm. What is it? Yeah, I think the person being cared for, um, of course, they will need, they need support. They need, um, right. they need a, a services, help right. with with tasks. I think that caregivers themselves um, benefit a lot with one, the knowledge of what's out there and the resources in the community that can help them. Mm -hmm. And two, just um, somebody to say, this is okay. It's okay to feel this way. It's okay to be frustrated. Um, and you know, let me help you get to where you need to be and, yeah. and some services. Um, I talk a lot about support groups in the area. Um, online actually support groups I just learned of and I think it's so wonderful because a lot of people can't get out right um, because they're spending all their time they, caring right right now I know it, it, earlier we were talking about before the show we were talking about a, a situation that you had actually walked into which and I, and I remember you describing the family situation I was like wow I, I this sounds like a, I've heard this a lot can you just talk about that a little bit with the Brother the brother and the sister. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. That situation. Um, it's a good one because well, it's a good one for me to talk about because right. um, it kind of shows the dynamic of my job, which is very different. It can be very different. Um, there was a brother and sister caring for a mm -hmm. mother, mm -hmm. um, and she lived on her own in, a, in an apartment. Um, the 
the sister, the daughter, was actually the main caregiver. And really from me, when we met, she just wanted to talk, just wanted to vent and wanted someone to hear her that understands, yeah. um, you know, that, that this is what she's going through. And, and, she, and by the way, how did she even find you? Or did you find her? Do her you know mother how she was came actually a, a Bay Path client. I see. Yeah. Other than that, I try my best now that I'm in this role to yeah. um, use some of my time for outreach and marketing. So I'm yeah. sort of popping my face in all over the place, trying to get people to um, in the community yeah. to know about my program. Coming on TV show. Right. You do exactly. A lot of stuff. So now go back to that situation. So, so you so you talked. You said you you know you met the you were introduced and you met the daughter. Yes, I had, worked had with you, her. Had you met the mother before? No, okay. I have not. And, and by the way, I think one of the things we're, uh, we're, we talked about it was that often you really try when you're initially going out to see the caregiver mm -hmm. to be not necessarily having the caregiver and the person being cared for Together. both there. Right. You really want because you really want to get a sense from the caregiver what's going on. I think right? it's important, yeah, for yeah. someone to be able to speak freely. Yeah. Um, you know, sometimes that might be with the care recipient there, but a lot of times it's it's not. So we try to to make it a point for me to either go yeah. to them, or um, I've actually met caregivers out at like Dunkin' Donuts, <laughs> just like yeah. in a corner. We've been able to talk. Um, I've had them come into Bay Path as well. So in this case, did you go out? To, did you go out to her? I went out to her. I see. Yeah. And in that meeting, was it just you and her? Just her and I. Yep. And then um, I met with her brother the care recipient's son actually separately yeah and um, he what he really benefited from me was information and he was mm. trying to get his mom on mass health and filling out the mass health application and who do I talk to and who do I talk to about assets so yeah. we talked a lot about elder law attorneys yeah we talked about the shine counselor at the senior center who provides typically terrific advice yes really yes yeah. and um, and who can help with the mass health application and things like that so it was it was very different so what I do is very different day to day it's now did you end up meeting with the both of them I did not I met you with did. them separately they knew that I was meeting with the right. two of them you know the dynamic right. just didn't work out and were you getting a sense of any tension between the two of them? Yes. Because, boy, I see that a lot, too. That's really hard. I and it's see really that hard. as well. Everybody, well, sometimes everybody not well-intentioned. Every once in a while you get a jerk kid, you know, mm -hmm. who just is really just trying to look out for their own interests. Sure. But uh, most times it, you've got kids who are all interested mm -hmm. in mom or dad, but they're just seeing it kind of in a different way. Right, right. right. Or they may want different things for for their mom or dad right. or you know whoever their loved one is and I've actually offered I haven't had a big family meeting yet with anybody but I yeah. have offered um, I am available for that I can sort of not that I'm going to be a family mediator but I will right. talk to everybody at one time and just say this is what's out there and, and if there is one main caregiver I think it's important to say um, to the rest of the family they can't do it alone they can't right. Right. So in this particular case, with, 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 from the talk, talking with the two, with the two of them, right? Mm -hmm. Were you was there with, were you finding that there were issues between the two of them? There was. Um, I think this particular daughter, yeah. um, sister, yeah. she felt like she didn't really have much help, but she she was thankful for the um, financial help that the brother was offering. But the issue was. Except that he's not a, except right the rest of it because yeah. like he was not around and, and that I think that's probably the most common that people just feel buried. Mm -hmm. Now, how do you deal with it when you've got the you know the, the the two spouses and the you've got the one spouse who is taking care of the other spouse and then the kids are getting. I bet you see that kind of tension all the time too, right? I do. Yeah, I try to distinguish who this who the main caregiver may be and yeah. talk to them. Um, always a daughter. It's always a it's daughter. It's always a daughter. Right. Um, if there is a spouse, I'm yeah. sure they're doing most of it um, as well. So I try to just if I can talk to people separately at first, yeah. it would be good, you know, for me to understand the roles a little bit better. And are there any uh, are there any programs specifically designed for caregivers to help them to help them deal with all of the stress and just what like what can I do if I'm because I I guess from watching fo this play out kind of over and over mm -hmm. I see these caregivers and more than anything they feel really alone mm -hmm. you know they're feeling like I'm, 
some, and sometimes really trapped almost. Yeah. Right? And right. kind of not knowing what to do. Yeah. So and what I, can they do? And there, what can you do for them? Yeah, there are um, programs that kind of cross my desk every once in a while that I yeah. throw out to all my caregivers that I've worked with um, in the area. But there are trainings. Um, one of them is Powerful Tools for Caregivers, which mm -hmm. I soon hope to be um, trained in and be able to host one at Bay Path. Yeah. Um, that's my hope. And, um, and what's so interesting, I've, I've heard of this program. Yeah. The name of it, it sounds like it's powerful tools to help the caregiver deal with the person you're caring for. But it's really much more about how to help the caregiver not go nuts. Right, care right, for themselves. And blow up as okay. a result of kind of just trying to handle all this stuff. Right, right, which is very important um, just to, to care for yourself. Now, I, I know that you, you, you've also mentioned to me that there are, there are programs that can actually give the caregiver some relief and some time, right, by really providing something, some time to the folks who are at home. Can you just talk about what some of those programs Yeah, I think we had talked like? about um, basically, well, within Bay Path, we yeah. have uh, the, the home care program, which can offer in-home help. Mm -hmm. um, and if they, if they don't want, necessarily want cleaning or bathing, um, we can just do companionship. So somebody to just come out and be with your loved one and, and allow you some time out. Yeah. Um, there's also adult day health programs, which is a full day. Um, some of them offer transportation and you can, your loved one can go and it's a, a socialization program. And, and what in, in an adult day health program, kind of what typically happens during that day? I would, I would imagine there are a lot of seniors that would be like, I don't want to leave the house, you know? Right. Many of them right. who have been in that house for a long time. Yeah. That could be really kind of intimidating. Can you right. just talk about how, what that what that program or yeah. what those programs tend to look like? I think there are two different models of the mm -hmm. Adult Day Health Program that I've seen. Um, one is a medical model, and it's more um, s big open spaces, socialization, and y you know you'll meet in a group. Mm -hmm. um, there'll there'll be lunch served and snacks, I believe. Um, and then other than that, there's activities and games and things throughout the day for the person to do. I see. Um, the other aspect I think of that is the social model, I want to say it's yeah. called. And it's um, the setting is a lot different, more of like a home. Right. It's set in a very small, um, cozy atmosphere. So right. it, it helps people, I think, adapt a little bit better. Um, yeah. But they're both great in their own way. And, and, yeah, I know there's this wonderful place called Pleasantries in Marlboro. That's which I, what I'm thinking of right, right now. Tammy Pazaricki. She's great. No, I, I can't remember if I've interviewed her on this show, her, her show but just the, this notion of having a place that isn't, that is really for people, and I know like my brother-in-law goes, my, and, and, mm -hmm. and, and, and who, who've got kind of some, some, have some issues, right? Yeah. Um, but just a very safe place and a place where people, among other things, people who've got maybe early, early stage dementia, can share with each other the fact that they have early stage dementia and kind of talk about that, right. you know, because you don't, because right. just like the caregivers feel pretty feel, feel pretty isolated. Folks in that position, you know, if you actually got other people that are going through that, mm -hmm. boy, it, just, it just seems to make it a lot easier. Absolutely, right? yeah. So, in in order for a person like this person you were talking about, the mother of the two kids, who is already a client, mm -hmm. in order for her to her or him to become a client. What does she do? Uh, what does he or she do? And uh, what does it take to qualify? Do you need to be, can just any s person by virtue of being old qualify? Do you need to need certain, have certain needs? Can you just kind of talk about that a little sure, bit? Sure, yeah. All Our right. guidelines are, um, well, 60 and over yeah. is for the age. Um, and the needs, and that's not necessarily uh, somebody that you need to come in and help you with things, but maybe somebody else is helping. A daughter is doing your medication or your money management, that would count as one of your needs. I so, see. Even if it's being taken care of right now, the mere right. fact that you that you need it, even though someone's doing it, could qualify. You. Counts. I yep. See. So yeah. we go, um, we have a, a, a activities of da daily living and independent activities of daily living. Yeah. Um, kind of list that we check off and um, and I and I know once again my my familiarity typically stops with the activities of daily living and everybody will say well that's everything right that's just the activities that you live mm -hmm. but really there are the kind of the six official ones if don't tell me it, which are I think um, dressing eating bathing toileting transferring 
Yes. Right? Yeah. Transferring, getting up out of a chair, getting across a room, sitting down. Right. But you, but but there are other activities of daily living or needs for for activities that could also qualify people for some of these programs. Yes. Right? Can, yes. can you give us some examples of those? Yeah. Those are more um, like grocery shopping, yeah. cleaning, laundry, uh, transportation. Uh, medication management, money management, um, and meal preparation. That's a really broad, that's yeah. a broad set of categories. So, so out if you of need all of help that, with those, you know, about six of them will qualify you for Bay Path. Then you can qualify for Bay Path. Yeah. And and once again, if you qualify, then you, as you've mentioned, the programs that you're providing funding for, you it, it doesn't have to be that they're that these people have got no assets, right? Right. They're just going to pay. They may pay something. Right. right, yes, our copay, um, it's a sliding scale and mm -hmm. it goes from about a volunteer copay yeah. um, of $9, I believe, up to 100%. Um, so you could be in a percent range. I see. Um, I see. 50% to 100%. And, to, and just to give us a sense, because so you, you, you see a lot of people, right? Mm -hmm. What percentage of the people you see end up at the end of the day paying for 100% of the services that you're talking about? I don't think. I think a lot of people come yeah. on when they hear 100%, but yeah. they absolutely yeah. can. Um, yeah. I, I, I want to say maybe only 10% or so. So a very small Pretty percentage small of people. Amount. So most people can qualify for services wrong, with a small... No, that's okay. I'm just yeah. kind of... Yeah. Because once again, I think there is this hesitance to call right. because people will just go, oh, well, you know, I'm not really poor, mm -hmm. you know, so I really couldn't qualify for this. And, and, and what I, I always tell my clients is don't say no to yourself. Mm -hmm. Call and let them say no. Right. right? But I think yeah. that even even if you don't get you know the services yeah. through Bay Path, just calling can open up so many resources and referrals and things from our ref information and referral department. Which um, leads or me to can the lead next. Me to me, lead yes. you to me. Yes. Um, Which leads so. me to the next question. Also, you have a website. Kind we of do. A, a, re a referral website, which is just wonderful. Yes. Wonderful. Can our you just website, talk, about, talk about it a little bit? Our website is um, exploding. It's so much information. Um, it's actually called caregiving, caregivingmetrowest.org. So that's one word, caregivingmetrowest. Yes, dot org. Dot org. And by the way, we'll have a banner at this on this show that we'll yep. get to the, to the cable station so that people can see that mm -hmm. they want to connect in. Right. Great. And, um, and, and that's a, just a great place to go for resources and information in the Metro West area. It's actually 25 towns. Including um, Westboro. Including Westboro. Yeah. And it's resources to include support groups, information, um, elder law attorneys, adult day health, um, housing information, transportation in your town, um, grocers that deliver, laundry pickup. So That's it's, terrific. it's a lot of um, helpful things. And helpful one of the tools. ways you can, I, I, I did interrupt, one of the ways you can get to it is by town, right? You can literally yes. click There is a Westboro quick, clickable map. So you can click great. Westboro or a surrounding town if you want to just be local. Um, right. And it will come up with all the things in that town. Um, you can also just do uh, search by type. Yeah. So you can do adult day health centers oh, yeah. and find all of them or um, personal care agencies. Yeah. and find all of them in those 25 towns. Um, another aspect of the site, which I just want to mention, um, is the information that's available. Um, we have information on all sorts of health conditions, um, just for your sort of knowledge and learning. Right, uh, as we, opposed to just Googling it, where all right, you're doing is everybody's right. pitching a sale, mm -hmm. which is the hardest part about the Google. I mean, the information's there somewhere. Yeah. But it's like item number 10,000, you it know. It could and, be anything. So right. we have sort of just some specific information on a couple of health conditions. Um, we have guides to caregiving information. We have checklists for caregivers. Mm -hmm. um, two of our brand new things on the website is one that I actually I run. It's the Wellness Wall. And mm -hmm. it's um, straight from my mouth. It's advice, tips, thoughts, um, things like that. I update it every couple of weeks, every week or two, actually. Um, and it's from my professional and personal experience, I and I, it's it's been going very well. I was going to say, um, and, and I'm sure that that's constant. That you yourself are constantly updating because you're getting every like with, with me, you're getting stories every day. Yes. And yes. and therefore trying to figure out these solutions all the time. Yes. So I take those and and sort of relay them back into the community. Yeah. However, I can. Um, the other brand new thing on the site that I'll just mention is the um, advice for younger caregivers. We had a, a woman in 
Baypath, who's 30, and um, her mom just had a stroke, and sh her world was turned upside down That's overnight. Changed. So right. uh, she wrote this really, really well-written um, advice blog style. Um, and, and put it on the site and, and its own page. So that's there now. So that's great. It's ever changing. I was just going to say it's ever changing. Yes. And it must be kind of fun dealing with these the younger folks also because they're in the middle of their own worlds, mm -hmm. you know, whether they have already have children and they're trying to deal with all of that stuff. Right. So helping them navigate through that must just be a, just a huge task. I think it's certainly task. helpful to, to guide somebody to, because to guide there's a through. lot. So, so a, as you can see, Bay Path Elder Services, well, her, right? Alicia, Alicia Rago, right, mm -hmm. may be able to help you. Yes. Um, or at least may be able to guide you to the folks that may be able to help you. That's, and they're not gonna charge you. This is not, this, th this is your, th she is your tax dollars at work, right? A very useful role for your tax dollars to be playing. So you, if, if you're looking for this kind of information, you should be going to that website. Once again, we'll have a banner. Maybe you've seen it already by this point in the show uh, on how to connect in. I want to thank you very much for coming on the thank show. You. Thank, thank you, you well. very much for watching, and we'll look forward to seeing you in the next installment of Bergeron Briefs. Thank you very much.